Okay, let's go ahead and I think at this point, probably relatively safe to add another subdivision. That's just going to be control D and I'm going to use damn standard. We'll get a bit of a lazy radius and we'll drop the easy intensity. And I'm going to just begin looking for some of this stuff around the perimeter of our ear. Looks like it kind of comes down and then right over here sort of tapers off. Maybe we go in a little bit and we can start thinking about what this negative shape space thing here looks like. So we've got a nice flat wall and then this is all going to kind of go underneath what's happening here. So I'm going to hop back over to clay tubes. Really reduce my intensity a little bit. And we'll begin filling some of this in. Whoops, I want to understand how much of a gap I have here. So I'm using my uh, my negative. Taking a look over here. And come down a bit further. So there's just lots and lots of little adjustments as you go. Okay, so just uh, grab the flatten 404. I'm going to throw the square alpha on it and give it a little bit of a modification there in the focal shift to begin working through cleaning up some of the random scratches and trying to figure out a little bit more about the, the finesse here. So this this stuff smoothly transitions, right? So I know that that's gonna, this edge is gonna taper down into the ear or into the flat plane. And we can actually get a lot more information here. So using clay tubes, there's a, this is a, at this point, a dense enough mesh. And I'm using the um, S key to change the brush size. And I can see that it's gonna to need to go underneath the, the ear. I, I mean, I, I can't really see it, but I just know that it's gonna to need to do that. So I'm gonna use clay tubes. I don't think it's really much of an issue at this point, but if you ever have something small, something thin, like we'll definitely talk about this when we when we start looking at the, uh, the hands, which is the next project. Uh, but there's this back face masking which again, I don't think it's really going to be necessary on the ear because the ear is not very, not very thin. But you have to think of this circular thing as actually more of a like a sphere, and it'll impact geometry within the sphere. So it can also hit stuff that's on the back that you may not actually want to hit. Okay, so it gets a little skinny here. I'm going to use the move brush just to kind of tuck that in a bit. And we'll use clay tubes. I'm going to give it a little bit more intensity. And I want to actually find a bit of a deeper, deeper form here, sort of in the ear canal. And now I'm starting to feel like I'm kind of bumping up against my, uh, my resolution in terms of what my my polys can support at least in this area, so I'm not going to try to push that too much further. And we've got this like little notch thing there. I don't really know what's happening up there. So I'm just going to assume that it kind of transitions maybe a little bit more gracefully. And I'm not using the, uh, the smooth feature at all anymore. It's all just the flatten brush. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, probably one more subdivision. So now this takes us up to four. And with four subdivisions, I have uh, 65,000 polygons, which is might sound like a lot, but ZBrush isn't even breaking us away yet. Okay, so now I'm going to use my damn standard and we'll just kind of tuck some of this geometry back underneath the ear a bit. Again, it's got the lazy mouse with a lazy radius in the 40s. So you can see I've got this 
sort of transitional stuff, which there's a there's a, a very simple way to fix it. There's a brush that can handle it. But I'm not gonna worry about it too much right this minute. You can just notch it back a bit. Just to make sure we have a clean boundary. So there's this little divot thing there. So we can use the clay tubes and then kind of, so to, I pushed it in and now I'm gonna kind of pull, pull the geo around it up a bit. Now we have a lot more resolution that we can access for the inside of the ear. This structure is, I'm just looking at this thing here, very, very pronounced. Probably need to push that crevice a little bit. You know, just thinking about what an ear looks like from the front. Maybe we could even pull this out a bit further. So that's actually something that would probably be better done at a lower subdivision level. So I'm just gonna hit uh, Shift D, which is the hotkey to bring our subdivisions down a bit. We didn't change the subdivisions. We didn't add or remove. We just went to a lower one. And you can see now all that stuff updates, all that, that uh, finer sculpting detail updates according to uh, what has changed on the lower subdivisions. And this is kind of what I was talking about when I say I like to layer stuff up with the clay tubes brush. I mean, yeah, with clay tubes and then use the uh, flatten 404 to sort of bring it into compliance. So you can be a little, a little looser when you're adding volume or removing volume, such as in this area down here, because you know you're going to be able to come in and clean it up without too much trouble with the flatten brush. All right, so we've got a kind of a tighter crevice there, so I'm gonna go over to damn standard. And what's actually happening is this stuff is tucking underneath this area here. So we can try to maybe build in a little bit more of an overhang that we might just have to suggest it. There's a pretty good uh, sort of canyon here and the damn standard is going to be perfect for working on that. Okay, let's see. Push that in a bit more. And this is just our ear one demo. It doesn't have to be the most amazing ear ever. But you can see fairly quickly, it's, it's uh, possible to sculpt something that, you know, if you were trying to model this in some other, some other place, Maya or whatever, it would, uh, it would take a lot longer. All right, well, we're kind of probably getting pretty close to the end here. So I'm gonna clean it up with a flatten 4R4. Try to find some of this, these nice planar distinctions. And just because we can, I'll, I'll show you a, a brush for cleaning this stuff up, which I don't really use that often because it's not super, super common that I'm trying to keep a, a, a plane clean, but in this case, it's, it's kind of uh, perfect. This is actually really good for hard surface stuff, which is kind of more advanced. Let me just appease my OCD a little bit more here. 
but you can kind of see like this, the edge flow, like I'm just asking it to do stuff that it's not really, like it wants to kind of do something else. It'll react a little bit differently to the brush strokes depending on how it's configured. But anyway, let me show you that brush. It is called, what is it called? Planar. I don't think I quite did that right. So I'm going to select the Z modeler, which is one I'm probably just not going to need for a little while. So we can overwrite that. And the way planar works is you click down and then it just will take whatever value, like whatever the, the surface curvature is where you place your mouse and it'll kind of just pave that. So it's very nice. Obviously the back of the ear is going to need a little bit more attention, but we're a little bit past time, so I want to try to wrap it up. So, uh, you know, if this is for uh, for practice, I, I would recommend maybe you spend longer than 20 minutes on it. But uh, yeah, there you go. So there's our first little modeling demo, and we will continue on this same train of thought here in the next series of videos.